Hello, fans of DX Engineering. It's Tuesday afternoon. That means it's time for Tuesdays with DX Engineering. And this is a show where we bring on our DX Engineering employees, some of whom you may have talked to on the phone or emailed with, longtime DX Engineering employee, George K3GP is with us today. Hello, George. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, of course, George and I are snowed in today, so it's good. Uh, it's good to have the uh, the shack at home experience. George, we want to talk talk Emotion about RT at the front door. Uh oh. Uh, we want to talk about RTTY contest today. RTTY setup and also some FT8 setup. George, when customers call in and they they have questions about interfacing their HF radio to digital, their digital logging programs, et cetera, what, what are the most common issues that somebody can have when they're setting up the digital interface between the computer and the radio? Well, one of the things that you run into or I run into often is uh, are you using a relatively modern rig that has the uh, necessary digital interfaces built in? Are you trying to uh, uh, use a classic radio that's working just fine, but doesn't have that built in? So there you get into the issues of how do you interface if you don't have a built in interface with your radio? That's the first thing we run into. You know, uh, George, on that topic, uh, there are thousands of signal link interfaces out there, right? The old signal link. And, uh, you know, uh, for somebody who's just getting started, I mean, should they look for a signal link or uh, the modern radios have all those interfaces built in, right? Yes, and occasionally I find somebody that's trying to buy a signal link for a modern radio, which is just overkill and expenditures you don't have to make. So uh, when I catch that, I do try to inform them, hey, you really don't need a signal link or a digi rig. It's built into your whatever your new rig is. So uh, if you get like an IC7300, George, how hard is it to get that going on FT8? Not bad at all. Probably the trickiest thing, and it's not all that tricky, is to make sure you have the right drivers loaded in your computer to interface with the radio. That's critical. Uh, once you get past that, which takes a little bit of a learning curve, not bad, but most people can handle it, uh, you're home free. You plug in a USB cable between the computer and the radio, and you're in business. So what what about finding COM ports and sp setting speeds, things like that? Well, there that is important. Uh, uh, the There are some websites um, uh available and have a lot of information about configuring those ports. Usually you use uh, uh, things like your uh, uh, configuration manager and your device manager. Sometimes you need to get into that. And there's a lot of help available on YouTube uh, that, that I'm able to point people toward. You know, how, how about the uh, on all bands, our blog? Um, you, you know, we've got some great information up there, some of it written by um, some of our bloggers from all over the country, actually all over the world, on interfacing. I mean, do, can you point customers there and, and that's an online help? Oh, certainly, yes, that, that, that's always very helpful. And uh, uh, like a lot of things on the internet, you have to take it with a slight grain of salt because sometimes you'll find slightly conf uh, conflicting information. But uh, give us a call, we'll help you through that. You know, but onallbands.com, which is the DX Engineering blog, is really a great resource for a lot of things in ham radio. Um, what about RTTY? Uh, let's talk about some of the differences between the setups for, uh, there's some really good activity weekends coming up on RIDI, and I know that RIDI is your favorite mode. Absolutely. And, you know, certainly that there's uh, different concepts. RIDI has been around for an awful long time. And uh, unlike FT8 and FT4, which are taking off like gangbusters and, and uh, done a lot for the ham community, uh, tuning a RIDI signal takes a little bit of panache, if you will. Uh, and uh, 
Whereas most people leave their uh, bandwidths wide open for FT4, FT8, you tend to crowd them down to maybe 500 hertz or so for RTTY so that you can pick and choose the signal that you're working with. So that's the difference between the main difference between the two. And of course, the software that uh, is available is a bit different too. Although some of the contesting, uh, contesting programs uh, actually integrate MMTTY and uh, some other uh, software right into them and make your life a little easier. If you're used to using a standalone program, uh, getting into contesting is the next logical step. Right. And, you know, it's tough in a non-contest period to find RTTY guys to work. Uh, I know that uh, like the Northern California Contest Club has some activity week or uh, on the weekdays on Thursday nights before the big RTTY contest. But where do you go to find RTTY activity when it's not a contest weekend, George? It's difficult. It's definitely difficult. And sometimes, uh, sometimes, of course, it's been a number of years ago, just tuning around and you find find something and you're lucky. I actually was able to work North Korea RTTY just because I blundered into it on a Saturday one some years ago. So it's a matter of tuning. If you know what you're listening for, you can hear FT8 signals and FT4 signals. Pretty signals sound different. But once you're acclimated your ear to a ready signal, you can tune up and down the band and say, ha, there's one, and you can hop on it. You know, and, and speaking of going up and down the band, uh, let's talk about FT8, FT4 a little bit, where there is some real good techniques to finding uh, open spots to put your transmitter, right? Uh, in, in some of these, these pileup situations, it's not just blindly calling on on whatever, uh, you know, you, there is some real technique. What, what do you find, you know, from the standpoint of the uh, pass band, setting the wide pass bands? And how hard is that to do on some of these radios? It's not difficult. Um, you just uh, you need to know how to set that up. And the, the, the beauty of it is with the wide pass band, for instance, last night uh, before 10 meters closed, I noticed 28 individual signals copying in the same 15 second period. Now, how do you pick where to go and transmit? Most of these uh, programs have a waterfall and look at the waterfall. You'll be able to find little slots that are empty and tune there. Is it really empty? Maybe not. Maybe you just can't hear it. But certainly one of the things I do if I'm after uh, a new country is I'll try one of the spots that seems to be empty and maybe make the contact. If not, I'll move to the next one up or down wherever I can find them. And that does seem to help a lot. Don't pick a frequency where you see a big red signal that's already there. You're competing with somebody else who may even have more power than you do. Right. And then let, let's talk. One of the things you just talked about was in that 15 second window, um, sometimes it's helpful to switch between the odd and the even, right? Um, Absolutely. So that you, yeah. you rotate yeah. yourself. Yeah, generally when I get in and I'm, I'm listening, I just leave the thing receive and then I can figure out, okay, I'm after this particular DX station that I haven't worked before and he's on this particular, the odd or even segment and I choose the other one. Obviously, you don't want to be in the same segment that he's calling. Right, right. Uh, let's, uh, I want to go uh, to the chat room here real quick, uh, George, because we have a lot of viewers on today. Uh, we're down in Mexico at X-Ray Echo 2 Zulu Zulu. Over in Scotland, Golf Mike Zero, Golf Mike November. James is on. Bob the Traveler, always watching WD8 November, Victor November. And uh, he says FT8 is making ham radio the greatest. And uh, it's true. I mean, with low power, uh, not much of an antenna, you can have a lot of great success. And... Uh, Kilo Tango One Radio, Lou is on in West Virginia. He says, Windows 11 drivers and settings had me scratching my head. <laughs> and, uh, boy, that, that is true. Every one of the Windows versions, um, we were working on some Windows 11 issues here at the K3LR shack today uh, on uh, load sharing with uh, browsers. So all those things do matter. Those settings are really important, and there's lots of online resources our friend Paul, November 6th, Papa Sierra Echo out in California. 
He enjoys all the modes, including FT8, FT4. Um, up in Alaska, I'm not sure who the call sign is uh, here, but it says for rigs like the IC705, SDR control is awesome. Wireless FT8 from the iPad or iPhone, really like it. And then he's got uh, a web link here, hamradioapps.com backslash SDR control for ICOM. Mm -hmm. And Rodney's on from Texas. He's running FT8 right now on a team chat, watching the DX engineering stream. That's the advantage of FT8. <laughs> you can watch us, George, and yeah. you can be working FT8. Uh, Ira is on uh, from uh, Anguilla. Victor Papa 2 Echo India Hotel. Hey, I'm on 10 meters FT8 right now. Uh, J88 IHQTH. Uh, I think he's doing remote, uh, George, with the 7300 low power and a wire antenna. Merry Christmas from Ira. And our friend Craig Clark, K1 Queen X ray on. Thanks for the resources. From England, it's Mike Zero Delta Sierra Kilo. And uh, Steve, November Alpha 5, Charlie's on. He says, Good afternoon, guys. Years ago, I used to do a lot of Riddy. And I got to the point where I thought I could copy some Ridian words. And do you feel like that too, George? Yeah, absolutely. I could copy my own, could hear a Ridian signal and know it was my call sign. That's about all I could copy. That's CQ and CQ. But I, I tuned my ears to do that. <laughs> and Adrian over in uh, the Netherlands, Papa Echo 2 Kilo was on. He says FT4 and Ridian are great. And uh, Gary... W9 X-Ray Tango, one of our great vendors here at DX Engineering. I've been trying to get local FT8 operators to try RTTY contesting. If you run FT8, you're 80% of the way to RTTY, and RTTY contesting can be much more fun than FT4, FT8 contesting. W8CI, Michael from down in Xenia, Ohio, says so much happening on the radio, so many modes and astonishing gear keep appearing. Brady from Pittsburgh, uh, W3 Bravo Radio Lima. I usually run FT8 when I want to play radio, but I have to work in a meeting uh, that the FT8 is helpful. Computer is already out, right? I guess it's, it's like Cyber Monday was going on, and they said the average person uh, was at work, but spending two hours uh, buying things online. So I guess... They, they use FT8 uh, when they're not buying things. And, of course, Alaska Radio is our friend Tim. Kilo Lima 5, November Echo. Uh, Scotty, WK3N. You know Scotty, uh, George, uh, up, up there in Pima Tuming. The use of the waterfall is imperative, and it's the first thing you should do. You're spot on. And, of course, WK3N never sleeps, always looking for the DX. And uh, lots of DX on FT8, uh, George, uh, even with a simple antenna, right? Oh, yeah, quite, quite the case. I've been having fun for uh, for 80 and 40. I have basically wire antennas that I tend to, to, to prefer, and they've done extremely well for me on uh, uh, FT8 and FT4. Yeah, yeah, it just, it's incredible what you can work with very simple setups. And it's very easy when you do the parks on the air activations. You know, the POTA activations can be done really quickly with you with just that one USB connection, George, right? Yep. And of course, the IC7300 has never been as low a price as it is right now. Uh, go to dxengineering.com, put in IC7300, and take a look at the price because it is a real attractive uh, price. The Mark II is coming soon, but you can get an IC7300 that has almost all the features that the Mark II has for a really attractive price. George, thanks so much for being on with me today. It, it is great to talk about all things digital. And of course, if you didn't get your question asked, you can also always write in to DX Engineering at dxengineering.com or give us a call. And uh, Mike says, uh, any price on the new 7300? Of course we got the price on the new 7300. It's $14.99, and uh, you can get your back order placed because you need to get your 
your place in line. But $14.99, if you have a reservation, we're converting all the reservations to uh, real live orders now that it's been type accepted. So, Mike, jump on the phone and get that done. George, thanks again. George is going to get back on the phones, and we wish you the best, and Merry Christmas, George. Happy holidays, everybody. All right, and thanks to all of you for watching today. Hope you learned something. And get on the radio and have some fun. It's the best hobby in the world. Until next time, 73 from DX Engineering. Good day.